yeah, okay, so we're going to do this. We're going to be putting together this little pen today as like a demonstration of Fusion. We're going to go over like basics of like the interface, how to put things together, like just getting started with Fusion. The idea is not um, like here's an engineering degree, here's how to like make certified mechanical designs. This is sort of like I've never used a CAD software before. How do I even make like anything and what is CAD? So um, the reason to use Fusion versus anything else, like there's other tools out there, Inventor, SolidWorks. Um, most of them are very, very expensive just because they are like aimed at mechanical engineering people. Um, Fusion, if you're doing non-commercial work, there is still a free version available from um, Autodesk and with some weirdness on their like qualifications um, for applying, they do also offer free options for startups who are in the um, like manufacturing sector. Um, so like there are other tools out there like there's Onshape and a few others free CAD, but they are not as mature and their ULAs are, are EULAs, TOSs are a little bit weird. Um, Fusion is still like the best um, relatively accessible tool for getting into CAD if you're trying to do designs for 3D printing or um, like getting into mechanical design, prop making, stuff along those lines. Um, so to kind of compare CAD versus other 3D modeling tools like Maya or Blender or 3ds Max, um, CAD is to 3D modeling in those softwares like Illustrator is to Photoshop. Um, CAD is parametric. When you're modeling things, you're not dealing with individual faces and vertices. You're dealing with drawing out shapes that are then extruded in 3D. So you can think of it like vectors instead of bitmaps, Illustrator instead of Photoshop. That means they're parametric. They're infinitely scalable. If I want to go back and change something in the design, like I want to take this like pen clip and extend it outwards and change it, that will immediately change the 3D model and update it because it's completely based on the sketches mathematically, not on like I need to push and pull individual vertices and having a fixed limit to the resolution of the geometry. That's the benefit of CAD versus um, a polygonal modeling workflow is you're working completely with mathematically perfect shapes and forms with exact dimensions, not with um, like a lower resolution model, which you would be doing in a polygonal workflow. So in our Blender classes, we're going over like polygon sculpting for VFX and animation stuff. And um, CAD is, is aimed more towards like mechanical designs, 3D printing, stuff like that. So getting started with like the Fusion interface, we'll start off over on the left side. You'll have your... Um, uh, there's a, probably a proper name for this, like the, the your documents, essentially, where you've got, you can create folders for projects, you can create new files. Um, if you have projects that have um, multiple files on the go, like if you're working on um, bigger prop making projects, like I'll be working on designing a gun in one place and having like all of the um, accessories, things, um, components, like, uh, circuit boards, chips, springs, buttons there that I can then import into the project. Um, so here's where you keep all your projects and everything organized over here to the left. You can close it and open it using the little data panel button here up in the top left, which looks like a little grid. Data panel. Show. Hide. Um, depending on how big your screen it is, it can be helpful to hide it and just get a little bit more screen space to work with. Um, to actually like um, go through it, you've got obviously here you've got your projects and your folders, and then up at the top it's like Windows. Um, you got the file explorer, so you've got Home where it shows you all of your folders, all your projects, and then you go into them. And as you drill down into the folders, it shows you like I'm in the Familab folder, Famipong, and here's all my things, Famipong parts. It's fairly simple to to go through um, if you're familiar with like working in. Windows or like Mac OS, it's the same kind of file structure you're probably used to. Um, then in the actual like Fusion workspace window, you've got obviously your 3D view here, where you actually have all of the models in your current project that's open. Up at the top, you've got your toolbar. We'll go through some of the most common tools as we get into the project momentarily. And then over to the side here, you have your, um, your browser window where you've got, you can expand it, close it. And you've got all of the assets or all of the um, 
yeah, all the assets that make up the project. So to in this we're gonna have we have some decals, we have some sketches, we have some bodies. Bodies are your actual 3D models, the components in the scene. Sketches are the 2D drawings that you then push and pull to turn into bodies. Um, again, we'll cover this momentarily. And then things like canvases and decals are used for like adding um, reference images in the backgrounds, applying um, like logos and things to the model. Um, we'll get to those momentarily. Let me make sure I have my notes open so I can a couple things I wanted to check first. Yep, okay, so in the preferences, one of the things you want to check, um, like the first time you ever start up Fusion 360. So over here you can see um, I've got my name up here. This is going to have whatever name you have for your account. And under account, you have preferences. Why it's not... Um, ooh, does it not want to open when I have screen sharing? There we go. Um, why it's not under like file or something to open up like the settings for the software, I don't know, but it's under your account name preferences. One of the ones that you do want to check off and make sure you, you know what's what is your default modeling orientation here, which should just be under your general settings. Setting this between Y up and Z up, I prefer having Z up as the default modeling orientation, essentially, in a 3D view. And you can kind of see in Fusion, we've got this little box that shows us which way we're facing. Um, and I'm holding shift and the middle mouse button to just rotate around right now. You've got X, Y, and Z, and those are your 3D coordinates in 3D space. By default, Fusion is set so that the Y axis is your um, vertical up and down, and um, X and Z are the, the 2D grid for like forward, back, and left and right. Um, for most modeling softwares like uh, Blender, uh, 3ds Max, Maya, um, you're usually using Z as your up direction and X and Y as your left and right. Um, sometimes it will be Y up, sometimes it can be X up, although that's more rare than Y or Z. Um, but basically knowing that in your preferences... Man, it doesn't want to open the preferences quickly. Knowing that in your preferences you can set your default modeling orientation. Basically, if you were to take this model and export it and send it to, to like Blender, or you wanted to 3D print it, so you sent it to um, Prusa Slicer or Simplify 3D or Cura, the model might end up like facing on its. It might be laying on its side rather than um, facing up. So it might be. It might come into the software looking like that when you really wanted it to look like that. And the difference there would be either the Z direction is pointing upwards or the Y direction is pointing upwards. Um, it doesn't really change anything because you can then, you know, rotate the model in your 3D software afterwards. But if you constantly find yourself annoyed that your objects are oriented, orientated in the wrong direction when you import them, that's how you go and, and fix that problem. Um, so we're going to I'll create a new design here to start off, like, introducing the interface. Um, with our pen project. So the first thing that we're going to do to start off with is importing a background image to use as a reference to draw our design sketch on. So in the events and classes, I dropped the bit.ly link to our, our drive folder. Um, and I have a reference photo in there of a, p a pen from Boeing. It's just a little interesting um, pen where it's got like a hexagonal cross section, which makes things more interesting for teaching in, in Fusion. Um, so if you download that, we're going to be dropping that into our project to use as our background image. So to insert a background image to use as a reference, over here in Insert, you can see this like little picture -amic, um like photo icon. Um, so we're going to click on that to insert an image. Um, it's going to ask us if we want to insert an image that's already in one of our folders, like it's over in, um, if we had it already in our data panel. We don't. We're going to have it on our hard drive, so we're going to insert from my computer. I'm going to go to my downloads and grab the pen. So for most of the tools in Fusion 360, they'll have lots of different options depending on, like if you're extruding, it will say how much do you want to extrude, do you want to taper on that extrude, things along those lines. It'll pop up a little dialog box. So for 
inserting a background image, what we're doing is inserting a canvas with an image on it. And we can see that the image is there and what it wants is a face. When you're working in Fusion, all of the sketches are referenced to some um, some 2D plane so that the sketches are 2D and then you push and pull them to turn them into 3D objects. Um, when you don't have any objects in your scene, what it's going to ask is, let's put a 2D face on one of the um, the coordinate grids uh, relative to the world. So in 3D space, you have a grid, um, just like algebra, where you had x, y, only in this case we have x, y, y, z, and z, x. So these are our right, top, front, bottom, left. Like these are just the faces that show us like if we're facing perfectly on in one axis, this is our 2D plane. So we want to pick a face and say this is the 2D plane that we're going to add the image to. Um, and if we turn on in this little folder the origin, we can see where the, 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 um, the canvas has inserted itself in 3D space. It's right. Sorry, which one did you, which faces you attach it to? XZ? Uh, I think I attached it to the front face or to the right face. Um, in this case, it doesn't really matter because, um, we're not using multiple background images. We're not going to, the orientation isn't a big deal for this, but. Okay. Um, in some cases, like if you had, if you were trying to model a car based on reference images and you had top, left, right, bottom, it'd be really useful to have those be top, left, right, bottom. But um, in this case, just stick it to anything. Um, I have it vertically just because I like the look of a pen being vertical. Um, so. The first thing we want to do is that we want to make sure that this pen is actually to scale with the real world if we were going to be sending this to like 3D print a part for it or anything along those lines. Um, so the first thing we can check is in our document settings, we'll just do the little caret symbol to drop it down, what units we're using. Um, my preference is millimeters. Obviously over here we tend to use like inches and feet, but um, most uh, like 3D slicers um, for 3D printing and most like um, cam tools for doing uh, like CNC machining and stuff will work in millimeter in metric and millimeters. So that's usually what I'm thinking in terms of. So if you want to change your units next to this little units thing where it says millimeters, you just click the little piece of paper and change that. But I'm going to leave it as millimeters. So. Next thing, under the canvases, we can see we have our pen, and it highlights when we click it that this is the canvas with our pen background image. If I right-click on this, I can tell it to edit, and I can move it around in 3D space if I wanted to. But I'm going to cancel that. What I want to do is called Calibrate. And what Calibrate will let me do is now that I'm, as you see, my mouse has turned into a little plus sign, if I click from two points on this image, I can tell it exactly what that distance is. So if I have a known distance in my reference image, so a, um, a pen here is about um, 16 centimeters, so that's about um, roughly six inches long for a pen. Um, so basically I'm gonna go in here and say that between the bottom of the pen and the tip of the pen, I know for sure that that's going to be 160 millimeters. And so when I zoom out and I start actually 3D modeling the, the pen, I know for sure that the background image is to scale to the real world, which is super useful. And we could do that between anything. So if I wanted to calibrate and I didn't know the length of the pen, but I knew that the um, the clip here was 40 millimeters, I could say that no, no, between these two points, this is 40 millimeters, and it would scale the whole image up to make sure that that scale is correct. Um, so that in cases like um, if you're modeling a car and you didn't know the length of the car, but you knew the, the tires were exactly, you know, 18 inches around, you could use the tires as a reference to scale up the whole reference image to the correct um, real world scale. Um, so pretty useful, or like using the height of a person to get roughly the height of an object if you're trying to model something like that. So the, and then da 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 da. Let me just double check really quickly. Yep, okay. 
And then as I was saying, we can edit and move this around. The only thing I'm going to do really quickly is turn on my origin, and I'm just going to move the pen up so that the the base of the pen here, like the end of the, the yellow, is sitting roughly at the origin. Um, the origin is your 0, 0 point, so going up is positive z, going down is negative z, um, right is going to be positive y, left is negative y, etc. Um, and the reason I'm going to center the pen, the yellow bit of the pen here, is because we're going to start our sketch, we have to start our sketches on a 2D plane, we have to start the pen somewhere, so if I start the yellow from here, I can extrude it straight up, and not have to worry about, like, if the pen was, um, if I was starting here and trying to design the pen here, I'd have to pull up and pull down symmetrically to get, like, the body of the pen, whereas if I just move the canvas up and I'm pulling straight up, I'm pulling in one direction and I don't have to, like, make two measurements to make the, the 3D model. Um, which will make more sense momentarily. So, the first step we're going to do is to create a 3D model in Fusion, what you're doing is you're creating 2D sketches, which you then push and pull to turn into 3D models. So, the first tool panel here, under above Create, the first button is Create Sketch. If we hit Create Sketch and pick a plane, I'm going to pick the bottom plane, and you can see that the camera then orient orients us up, so we're facing the pen as if we were staring straight down the length of it. So the cross-section of a pen is obviously going to be, you know, roughly circular. So I'm going to make a circle. So I'm going to go over here to the top, create circle. If there was a tool you didn't want, like you wanted to make a polygon, there's not polygons here by default. Under the create menu, there's a bunch of different tools. Um, and as you might have noticed, the toolbar at the top here, everything updated when I switched into doing a 2D sketch. These menus are contextual, so if I finish, these are 3D tools. If I then go back to my sketches and double-click it to go back into editing that sketch, all the tools then contextually update. So I can create a circle. If I didn't have the circle up here, I could then go down to circle and find a circle. Um, if I wanted to do a circle in a different way, if I didn't want to use a center point, if I wanted to go a circle between two points or between three points, um, you have these options. And if you wanted, if you have tools that you use often, like I use polygons a lot to do like hexagons and pentagons and things, if you wanted that tool to permanently be in your hotbar so you always could click it without having to go into the drop down menu, what you do is you go over one of the tools that you want, you hover next to that little triple dot, and when you click it, you can say, pin to toolbar, and now it will be pinned up in your hotbar permanently until you right-click it and reset or remove it. So, for the pen, we're going to start with a center circle. I'm going to move over to the origin point, and you'll see a little square that kind of snaps our cursor to the center of the world. And I'm just going to drag it out and type 10 millimeters, because a pen is roughly 10 millimeters. And you'll see that the circle here turned black. So, I'm not going to really get into like best practices for engineering stuff, but I will point out um, in Fusion there are um, constraints. And this can help you do really dynamic and interesting things. So, as an example, you don't need to do this to follow along with me, but if I create a circle here, you'll see that this one is blue, whereas the one we made here is black. The reason it's black is because it is perfectly constrained. Um, we know exactly what its diameter is because we told it that this is exactly 10 millimeters, and we know exactly what its position is because we clicked on the origin and told it that the center of the circle is going to be locked to 0, 0 in the world. So we know exactly where this circle is. Whereas the blue one here, I didn't specify exactly what its diameter is, so I can grab that, scale it, shrink it, and I can grab the middle and drag it anywhere. There's no measurement defining exactly its size or exactly its position in space, but we could lock it down. So if I used the dimensioning tool here, um, the shortcut for that is D as in dog, 
and I clicked from the center of the circle to the center of the world, I could tell it it's 29 millimeters on the x-axis, and it's, you know, 12 millimeters up in the z-axis, and the circle is 6 millimeters around. And now the circle turns black, because we know exactly where it is in x and y, and we know exactly how wide the circle is, which means that this circle is completely and utterly defined in every single way. But if then we wanted to go back and change, like, this is 25 millimeters, that's totally fine. Um, and these can be used in really powerful and interesting ways um, if you have a lot of objects that are well-defined relative to each other. So if I added a... Um, let's go ahead and add a line. I'm going to add a line to this circle going straight up. And so the line, because I pulled it straight up and held shift so it was going straight up, this little squiggly thing tells me that it is um, locked vertically, so it's it can't be at any, like, angle. It can't be at 30 degrees or 10 degrees or 8 degrees. It's turned black, and if I change the distance of the circle to 29, this line moves with it. The reason it's turned black and it moves with this line is I clicked from the center of the circle straight up, so this line knows it always has to be well-defined, locked to the circle, and it always has to be vertical. So if I ever change the distance of any other part that it's attached to, it still knows that it's locked in a well-defined point in space. So Fusion, you can do some really interesting and complicated things setting up um, linked um, relationships between shapes and parts, and then if you ever want to update your model later, like you want to make it longer or shorter or change the profile of something, um, you can do some really cool dynamic things. Um, but if, if you're ever in a situation where you don't quite understand why is this object black, why is this one blue, what it, what's the difference between the two of those, it depends on if it's well-defined shape, size, position, or if it's not defined and it's just loose in space. That was probably an overly lengthy explanation of that. But, okay, so we have a circle. It's 10 millimeters around, which you can see is pretty much the diameter of the pen. Um, and it's locked at zero, zero. So to turn this into a 3D model, what we're going to do is we're going to hover over that sketch, that circle, and you'll see that it highlights it. If I click, it'll turn blue, so I now have selected that profile of the circle, and then I'm going to extrude upwards. The hotkey for that is E, as in um, egg, um, E for extrude, or up at the top here, this little thing that looks like a, a cube being pulled upwards for extrude. So, like I said, whenever you're using a tool in Fusion, it'll pop up with a little dialog box with lots of options. Right now, most of these we don't have to worry about. The first thing we can do is we can either use the arrow and drag by hand, or we can type a, a distance in here manually. Um, now, I know the measurements of the pen um, because I own this pen, so I'm going to go ahead and extrude this pen. I'm going to start by going up 10 millimeters. And the other thing I can do with this is I can taper it by 5 degrees. And so that gives us a little bit of a flare because the pen is starting to like taper in towards the tip. So we're going to make it 10 tall and flare it by 5 degrees to start off with. And then hit OK. And the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top of our now flared... Um, like funnel shape, select it, and then extrude that as well. So E for extrude, and this one I'm going to take up by 100 millimeters up to like the base of the, the pen cap, and hit OK. And so what that demonstrates is you can, you don't need to manually sketch every single face if you have an existing face on the top of a model. So I'll go ahead and hide my canvas here to make this more obvious. The top of the pen here is circular. Um, I don't need to draw another circle on the top of the pen to then use that circle as a sketch to then push and pull the model. Um, you can use existing faces in your 3D model to push and pull. So, um, and while we're at it, um, I'll point out at the bottom of the Fusion interface here, we have the timeline, and what the timeline lets you do is it shows you every single step in your project so far, 
And this little handle, you can push and pull it forward and backward. So if I roll back one step, you'll see that we go behind the extrude where I pulled it up, and we just have the funnel. If I pull it back, we just, we lose, woo, give it a second, we lose the funnel, but we still have the sketch where we drew the profile for it. And then if we roll forward, we get both of those steps back. Um, this can be really um, useful and interesting if you're working on really big, complicated projects and you're trying to go back and change something that you did um, a, a while ago. Um, and the other thing is, I can double click on any of these steps and update them. So if I wanted to make the funnel taller, I can double click on that step and tell it to be 15 instead of 10, and then it updates and carries all those updates forward down the timeline. So the funnel, if I make it shorter again, 5, you'll see that the pen stops here. So let me move it under like where it says body. So you can see that if I then make the funnel taller, make it 20, the, the pen cap, the cap or from, from the top of the funnel, it's still 100, but it's 100 based on the funnel being even taller. So it's even taller. So you can do dynamic updates, change things. This should be 10 and it will affect things down the timeline and update everything dynamically. So you can do some really powerful stuff. Okay, so we have a pen. It's starting to get flared at the bottom. It's going up to the top. If I show my canvas again, the next thing to point out is, um, and obviously I'm using little eyeballs here to show and hide things. Um, so if I hide my bodies for a second, just so I can focus on the canvas, this pen, has a um, hexagonal cross-section, which is slightly rounded. So we can actually do a hexagonal cross-section pretty easily. Um, so what we're going to do is, turning our bodies back on, I'm going to sketch from the top of the pen, make a hexagon, and then cut the hexagon out of our cylinder. Um, and so I, I want to select this face and create a new sketch. And something I'll point out there when we started off the project, we had nothing in the scene, and we had to use the origin to sketch on one of the, the 3D grids relative to the origin. And so our first sketch was on the origin. Whereas now, we're at the top of the pen, and our sketch isn't on the origin, it's actually on the flat face at the top of the pen. So you can actually use flat faces in your 3D model as origin points for your sketches. So you can actually start a cut um, from a face. You can start a cut. Um, yeah, you, you can start a cut from a face and then work down from there and up from there. You don't have to make everything relative to the origin. You can make sketches relative to each other, which again, if I go back and change the height of the pen, if I make this 50 instead of 100, that sketch updates so that when I go to edit it, it's still based on the top of the pen, even though the top of the pen is shorter. It will update it dynamically, so it's always relative to the top of the pen, which is cool. So let's move that back to where it should be. And inside of here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a polygon, an inscribed polygon, because I want it to be inside of our circle. And I'm just going to drag this towards the edge. Um, basically, if I click from the center and then click to the edge, I know that the polygon is going to be touching, its corners will be touching perfectly on the edge of the circle. And in this case, I really don't mind that it's still blue because I'm a polygon is um, rotationally symmetrical, so it doesn't matter. I could like add a, a line here, connect it to one of these points, and force it to be vertical and that would constrain everything. Suddenly everything turns black because we know that the points of the, um, the hexagon can't be at a random angle if this line connecting them has to be vertical. It forces it into like a known angle, um, but that's not strictly necessary. So I now have the hexagon inside of the circle of our um, pen body. And if I hide the pen body, you can see that I get this kind of hazy blue remnant of the circle. That hazy blue remnant is um, showing me a preview of the the profile of the, the, the face on the model that I started it off of. 
So because the top of the pen is a circle, and I said I'm gonna ba I'm gonna start sketching on this circle, it kind of shows me a hazy outline of the circle, and then I can use the difference between these two sketches as a cut. So you can see I can select this little sliver between the hexagon and the circle and select them as if I'd sketch them. I don't have to actually sketch or project the circle back into the scene. It just knows I have a hexagon inside of my circle. I want to use the, the sliver in between as a profile. So holding control down as I select these, these um, sections, I'm going to select all of the bits outside of the hexagon that I don't want to keep. Let me turn my bodies back on. And I'm going to extrude, but this time I'm going to pull downwards. And as I pull downwards, you'll notice that everything turns red. The red indicates that I'm cutting instead of creating a new body. So if I pull this straight down through the entirety of the pen and hit OK, you'll see that I've cut out those edges, and I'm left with the hexagon behind. And as it cuts down, because we tapered the bottom of the pen here, we have some um, like nice like pencil-shaped cutouts left behind, like these little arches, because the hexagon at the top is wider than at the bottom, so it can't actually kind of reach into the pen here. So it leaves us with this like really cool um, pencil shape. Um, so yeah, so the next step we're going to do, so we have the body of the pen uh, pen now starting to come together. Let me make sure in my steps, do, 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 uh, hexagon, cut it out, and then we can smooth it off. Okay, so I'm going to hide my canvases for a second just so it's easier to see what we're going to do next. Um, the other thing I can do is actually turn on the canvas, hide it. If you look at the pen, you can kind of see in the reflections in the photo that it um, it looks a little bit rounded, and um, you can really see it on the clip. It's a little bit rounded, it's a little bit rounded, it's a little bit rounded. Um, in real life, like there's no such thing as like a perfectly sharp angle. There's always a little bit of rounding because like machining and casting and things, there's never a perfect angle. Um, so let's go ahead and add the little bit of rounding so you can see how to like round off your shapes in Fusion. So the tool that we want for this is called a fillet. And so we're going to go ahead, fill it. It'll pop up a menu with some options. I'm going to make sure that it's, um, I have edges and faces I want to start selecting so that the select is blue. And we select hold control, select, hold control, select, and I'm going to start selecting the edges of the hexagon here. And then, again, I can either type in a radius or I can grab the arrow and push and pull it. And I'm going to round off these corners by like one millimeter. And whereas in something like Blender or um, 3ds Max or something, it might be really difficult to add a bunch of extra detail to round off an edge like that. In CAD, it doesn't matter. You're just you're working with like purely mathematical shapes. You can just round off edges like that. Really nice and simple to do. So let's continue on. Keep on making our pen. So. I guess the next thing we want to work on is the black tip of the pen and then like the the actual ballpoint at the end. So the black tip of the pen, if I click um, as I'm rotating around, if I want to go perfectly flat on to one direction, I can click on my little orientation cube here. So I want to go, I'm going to click on left and it'll make sure that I'm pointing completely perfectly flat on to the, uh, the, to the canvas here. And so it's kind of subtle to see but it looks like the cap or the, the little black tip of the pen here is actually slightly smaller than the body of the pen, which makes sense. They're probably clipped together, like one inserted into the other somehow. Um, so we can use this as a chance to introduce another tool. I'll hide my canvas for a second. I'm going to select the face at the bottom of the pen, create a new sketch. The camera will flip around. Um, 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the circular edge at the bottom of the pen and tap O as in octopus. And it pops up this tool, offset. So O for offset. Most of these tools have um, hotkeys that are like the letter of the thing, so it's really easy to remember these. Um, and what the offset tool lets me do is I can use any sketch or any profile from my 3D model and then create a ring that's bigger or smaller relative to it. And I can do not just like a circle here, which is simple. I could have made a circle slightly smaller than the circle we have instead of offsetting it. But you can also use offset to do really complex shapes. So um, let me cancel for that for a second. So if I wanted to, just for demonstrative purposes, if I wanted to offset the top of this, which we'll do later, but if I wanted to offset the top of it, um, this hexagon, we round it off in the, um, in the last step. So it'd be kind of annoying and complicated to then create a new sketch, create a hexagon that's bigger than our last hexagon, save it, round it off, extrude it, um, and maybe we rounded it slightly differently to the, to the hexagon underneath it so they don't align quite properly. In this case, I can select this profile and offset it, and it will automatically round it so it is perfectly, um, the thickness is perfectly even between the two edges. So obviously being a smaller hexagon inside, it's got a sharper corner. If you made that hexagon bigger and all the thicknesses were even, it's got a wider, softer rounded corner. Um, so you can use offset to do not only simple shapes like we're going to do at the bottom of the pen, but also complicated shapes like at the top of the pen. So. Let's go ahead and jump back down to the bottom of the pen very quickly. Open up our sketch again. So I'm going to offset into the pen, and in this case, by half a millimeter. And then I can finish my sketch, and I'm going to extrude this one downwards. Let me go ahead and turn on my canvas so I can see what I'm doing. And so the bottom of the pen here, let me check my notes, should be, yep, 17 millimeters. Um, and I believe the taper on this is negative seven and a half degrees to make it match up with our reference photo. So I could hit okay. And if I turn off my canvas, you can see that we have the tip of the pen. Um, however, I'm going to use this as a chance to point something out. So let me go back into the extrude, just double clicking on the timeline so I can just update that step. All of the steps that we've been doing so far have been using um, the join and cut operations, and they're all combining into this one body, this one object. Um, so these are all one continuous um, object, these aren't separate pieces, whereas on the pen, obviously the black cap here is probably a separate piece that's clipped in, so maybe we want to make that a separate object. We don't want to join it to the rest of the model. Um, we want it to start at the same place as the rest of the model, because obviously they're, they're slotted into each other, but we want them to be separate. So here, instead of the join operation, I can switch this out for new body and hit OK, and now we can see that in our bodies we have two separate bodies. We have the body for the, um, the main pen um, housing, and then we have the, the one for the tip, and we can double click, or click and hold to rename these. So I'm going to rename this as like pen body, and rename this one as like pen tip, and then we can keep track of these. Um, to make it even more obvious, obviously we have two separate bodies, but it's really hard to tell which is which at a glance because they're all this kind of silvery color that's really hard to, to, to distinguish. Um, we can change these um, visually and for like um, testing purposes. So under modify, I can go to appearance or A for or Apple for appearance and change the appearance of things. So if I want to go in here, um, Fusion has a big library of different kinds of materials. So I'm going to go under plastics and find um, an opaque plastic, um, like a glossy yellow, which matches our pen, and just drag and drop it onto the pen body, and boom, 
Now the pen body is like this glossy yellow plastic material, which is very obviously different from the tip. And the tip um, from the reference photo is like a glossy black, so let's go ahead and find like a glossy black and drag and drop that onto the pen. And now it's very easy, just at a glance in our viewport, to see which is which. Um, and if you were combining these appearances with um, under modify physical materials, um, you can link these two together and make sure that as you're applying materials to your objects, they are actually telling Fusion exactly what they're made of. So if you are like a really engineering, um, manufacturing kind of person like um, like Nick or something, and, and you know that you're going to be making this out of, you know, a certain kind of aluminium or a certain kind of steel or a certain kind of plastic, and you wanted to um, use Fusion simulations tools to stress test. If I were to bend it at this angle, where would it snap? Where are my stress points? You could not only change the appearance just for, you know, just for the looks of it, you could also tell it the physical material properties and it would have everything in there, including like its tensile strength and its, its um, compression resistance and all those kinds of fancy engineering things that I'm not qualified to talk about because I'm not an engineer. Um, but yeah, so now we have we have the cap, we have the body of the pen, and now you can actually tell at a glance which is which. So let's go ahead and just do basically the same thing we did with the tip and make the um, actual ballpoint. So let's turn the canvas back on. So let's do this one more time. I'm going to create a sketch from the tip. I'm going to offset it using my offset tool. Make sure I'm selecting just the tip of the pen. Let's move that in by, let's again, yeah, half a millimeter looks about right. Hit OK. And then in this, in this case, it's kind of hard to see, but it looks, but most ballpoints are kind of like straight and then flare. So I'm going to extrude this profile, drag it down like half a mil, tell it to be a new body, hit OK. And then I'll do another extrude, and this one will taper, say by like negative 15, to then be like the sharp tip of the pen, and hit OK. And in that case, I joined it because I knew that this cylinder was only touching the new body of the, um, the ballpoint. So we wanted to join these together into one ballpoint, but it didn't join the whole thing to the, the pen tip because this bit that we were extruding wasn't touching this bit that we weren't um, extruding it into. And so let me just rename this as pen ballpoint. Um, and we could even go a step further. So if I could hit hide my canvas for a second, under the create menu, um, there's all the tools for extrudes and sweeps and lofts, which we'll get into a little bit shortly. Um, but there's also some uh, primitive shapes, some like really basic shapes. So there's like a sphere here. If I wanted to really make this look like a ballpoint, I'll tell it to use a sphere, create a sphere on this face at the center, and make a sphere. Um, by default, because the because the volume of the sphere I'm making here is going inside of a previous model, um, Fusion assumes that if you're pushing a shape through another shape that you want to cut, but in this case, I don't want to cut. I want to join these. Um, yeah, let's say it's 1.5 millimeters and hit OK. And now we have a ballpoint tip, and it's got like the little round ball that would be in the tip of the pen. Cool. So this is starting to come together and actually look kind of like a pen. Um, and so we can do a very similar thing that we did at the bottom to the top. So if I turn on my canvas, rotate around to the side, you can see that um, the top of the pen to um, stop the clip from like just being able to push to be slid off the back of the pen, it's got like a little bit of a lip for the cap of the pen. Um, so just very similar to what we did at the bottom. We're going to offset the top, extrude it upwards, and then let's like add the little ball at the top for fun. So selecting the top. Um, I can, here's the thing, I can create new sketch by manually clicking new sketch, or 
if I know I'm going to be using one of the sketch tools, like if I wanted to make a circle using the hotkey C, I could just start by hitting C and it would know immediately, oh, you want to do a sketch, oh, you want to do a circle, start making a circle. In this case, because I want to offset, I could select this face, hit O for offset, and it knows immediately, oh, you want to make a sketch, you want to make an offset. Um, so you don't have to manually every time go to the top and say, make a new sketch, and then pick your tool. You can just click the hotkey for the tool, and it contextually knows, oh, you want to do this tool, let's jump into the sketch mode, which is really nice and clever of Fusion. So let's go ahead. The lip on the pen is very subtle. It's probably only like half a mil, maybe even a quarter of a mil, but let's make it half a mil just to exaggerate it. Hit OK. And now we can use um, this to extrude the pen up. So in this case, if I were to just extrude um, the outside offset that we made here, obviously the, um, the end result would be hollow, which we don't want. So in this case, make sure I got profile. I want to select both the little strip around the offsetted edge and the middle so it's solid and I'll drag these both up, and this should go up by like 25. That looks about right. And I'll tell it to join, so it joins with the pen body. Um, and because it's joining with the pen body, it knows, oh, the pen body's yellow, I should be yellow, we're all going to share the same material. Um, you can do separate materials by faces, not just by whole bodies, but um, in most cases, you're going to be making, uh, um, if you're manufacturing something, you're going to be using one material for per part. So the pen probably here is like injection molded plastic, so it's all going to be the same color, and then whatever printing label you put on top of that will be different. So, um, so just to wrap up, um, to kind of drive that point home, I will go ahead and create a sphere like we did last time. Select the top here, make it say 10 millimeters. I want to join instead of cut, so these are all part of the same body. Um, but the top here is black plastic, so I can select just that face, go for A for appearance, tell it instead of apply to bodies, I just want to apply it to faces, and make just that one face black plastic. So um, visually, it's a distinctive color, it's a distinctive part of the model, but as far as the bodies are concerned, if I were to pick it and move it and grab it, um, hide, show, it's combined with the top of the pen, even though visually we made sure that that one part of it was a separate color. And if we were to export this, like we were to save this as an STL that we wanted to 3D print, it would make, because this is all part of the same body, this would become all one um, continuous object that's completely um, watertight. And so kind of the last, last things that we're going to add on here are going to be the clip and then like the logo text on the side of the pen. So like we've been doing with everything else, we're going to do offsets. But in this case, the clip here is actually not quite touching up against like the um, the end stop at the top of the pen there. So what happens if we want to make a body that's offset from the face? Well, uh, we could start by like using the sketch, extrude downwards, and then like move the model afterwards as a separate step. Or we can sketch on a plane that's offset from the surface. So what we can do is over here we have these things called construction planes. And construction, these construction tools are kind of um, ways of making um, sketch planes and things that are relative to other things. So I can make a plane that's at an angle from a face. So if I don't want to um, model something that's completely flat on this face, I could make an angled face. Like this is, I want to make something that's 45 degrees off from the, the flat face here. I could make an angled um, sketch plane 45 degrees from this and then sketch on that. So then if I wanted to cut at 45 degree angle, I don't have to use this flat face and always be modeling perpendicular. Um, in this case, I want to make an offset plane starting from the like end stop of the cap of the pen. And I'll just move this down by a couple of millimeters and you'll see that it's like this yellow plane goes up and down. So let's move it down by like eh, one millimeter. Yeah, so let's call it one millimeter and hit OK. And then I can sketch starting from here instead of starting from up here. So let's go ahead, create a sketch. 
from here. Um, but now we run into a problem. So the clip, obviously, we want to um, have it conform to the outside of the pen. It has to have the same shape as the pen body because it clips onto the pen body. But if we're using a, a, an offset plane, we don't have like the usual um, like blue highlight um, of the the shape of the face that we selected because we didn't select a face. It's just an offset plane. It's just a, like a, a grid floating in space. So how do we use the shape of the pen body in this sketch? What we're going to do is we're going to project or intersect. We're going to use the um, we're going to to yeah project or intersect the shape get a cross-section of the model. That's the word I'm looking for. We're going to get a cross-section of the model into our sketch. So, showing our bodies, under the Create menu, we have this thing called Project or Intersect. So, in this case, um, in this case, it doesn't really matter because um, our sketch is kind of inside of the pen body. If we were to project or we were to intersect, it wouldn't... Um, change anything but that can be different in different circumstances so let me let me create a circumstance where this would change things so just as an example not something you need to follow along with i'm going to go ahead and create whoop nope i want to create a circle here create a circle i'm going to make a funnel shape very quickly 45 degrees 20 degrees so it doesn't cut into our pen. So I've had a funnel shape like this, and I made an offset plane in the middle here, and I started sketching on this. So the actual grid of our plane, we can see, lines up kind of halfway or just above halfway into the funnel shape here. So if I were to go ahead and project the top, you can see that the top is wider up here above our sketch than the actual cross section of the funnel is where our sketch is. So the circle is wider than the actual um, where we're intersecting with the model, where we're intersecting our, ske our sketch is actually passing through the model. So in this case, we probably wouldn't want to project if we were trying to make something conform to the, to the funnel shape. What we'd want to do instead is to intersect, and then it makes sure that it only uses a cross-section at the point where the, the sketch crosses through the body of the model. Um, so that's the difference between projecting, which will kind of go from, in this case, it's projecting straight down, perpendicular, down onto, the, um, onto our sketch. So if we were to project from the top, it would be too big. But if, also, similarly, if we were to project from the bottom, it would be too small. Um, in the case of the pen here, because the sides are completely um, perpendicular, the um, pen isn't flared like a funnel at this point. It doesn't matter if we were to project or intersect, um, except maybe if we were to project from the bottom of the pen here, because obviously this has a bit of a taper. Um, but just, just to be aware, if you're trying to, to do a cross-section of a model, keep in mind what the difference between project and intersect is. Um, so I can go ahead and roll back my timeline to get rid of these things that I made as an example and go back to what we were doing earlier, which is we're going to make the pen clip. Um, and just as a, as a point, I rolled back my timeline to get rid of the example. I can right-click on it and say, delete all features after our history marker. This little, um, little gray arrow thing that I'm moving around is our history marker. So if I delete everything after it, it gets rid of all of the things that I did before I rolled back, or after I rolled back, um, so I can get rid of the junk that I just made. So, going back to our front view, turning our canvas back on, or sorry, going back to our side view so I can see the clip. Cool. So, and let's jump back into our sketch. So, whoa, it rotated upside down for me, confused me. So, the clip is on an offset plane, it's a millimeter below the end cap of the, of the pen. What we want to do is use the cross section of the pen as as a reference for how big the um of, of how the shape of the clip is that's going to like you know clip over the pen. So create 
In this case, I'll do an intersect just to be like safe to what we're trying to do. I'll select the body here. I could either select the body in the 3D viewport, or I could select the body in our body list, just so I make sure I'm selecting the exact right body, and hit OK. And so now we, if we hide our bodies, we have the um, intersected profile of our, of our pen. And then I can offset that projection, or, or that intersection, and so I can make the clip like a millimeter thick. Like, I think the, me the metal there is probably eh, maybe half a mil or a millimeter thick of, of probably spring steel that that's made of. And hit OK. And we can see that the clip doesn't go all the way around the pen. So it's like a really quick and dirty way of making it not go all the way around a pen. The easiest thing I can do is just grab a rectangle and just say, I want to cut that out, and just make it a rectangle with like no reference. And then you can see here, if I start hovering, these pieces are now separate because the rectangle is kind of chopping them off. You can think of it like a cookie cutter or a laser beam, just like slicing off that bit of the model or that bit of our sketch. And so now if we're going to make our clip, I can just select this bit, and then this is like our clip that's going around the pen. So I finish the sketch, show our bodies, and start extruding. Um, right now it's joining. I want to make it a new body because our clip is going to be a new body. Five millimeters is good. If I hide the canvas so it's more obvious, you can see now we have the clip. And it doesn't go all the way around because we use that rectangle to like laser cut, slice off that little bit of, of the clip. Neat. Um, and so the last thing we're going to do, just to finish off the clip there, is we can actually just sort of make like a couple lines, round them off, and then combine them into the, the shape of the clip here. So from the side, I'll create a new sketch. From the side, I'll make a couple lines. So L for line, um, L as in lion, or line. Make a line from there to there. Oops, I accidentally made two lines because I clicked twice. I'll make a line from there to there. And hit OK. And so now I have... Oh, I accidentally clicked three times. That's my mistake. Okay. From the end of that line, drag it out. And you can see I'm, I'm not exactly following my reference at this point. I'm just sort of freehanding it. Um, and so this becomes a slight um, weird issue is, okay, this clip obviously flows perfectly into um, into the into the the clasp that goes around the edge of the pen. So how do we make sure that um, you know the inside of this line is going to meet up with the inside edge of the clasp, but the outside of this line has to meet up with the outside edge of the clasp. Um, and again, this is where we can use like projection and intersection. So I want to, in this case, I will intersect, and I will intersect here and hit OK. And if I now hide my bodies, hide my canvas, or turn, yeah, turn the canvas back on, turn the bodies back on, you'll see that this little rectangle is now one point is the exact inside edge, one point is the exact outside edge. And now I can make sure that, you know, whatever arc I make to loop over exactly matches up, so it'll be perfect. So, in this case, let me hide my bodies again, just focus on my sketch. So I want to make an arc that kind of loops over, loops over the top here, so I can go to create, arc. Uh, I will do, let's try a tangent arc maybe, and just go from here to here. And that looks slightly weird and bulbous, but because um, because these lines aren't well defined, I can move this line and like make it look better. So I'll just grab like this point and move it until it looks more smooth to my eyes. Again, right now I'm being artistic. I'm not being like perfect engineer or anything. Um, and so here the pen kind of this is probably bent metal, so they bent it over an edge. It's probably a, pretty rounded because they bent it over the edge of, a, of something. So what you can do in sketch mode to round off an edge, obviously we rounded the edges in 3D using a fillet. Well, you can also, under modify, you can do fillets in 2D too. So if I select these two edges, 
it will do a fillet in between them, and I can round off this by a certain radius. You can see this little point here is like the center of that radius. It tells us how wide the radius is. So maybe I make that like a five millimeter bend in the clip. And now I could either try to by hand recreate the hand the the freehand lines I did for the, the pen clasp and make it match up at the top, or because I know that the pen this this whole clasp is perfectly even thickness, I know that I made the clasp five millimeters thick. I can go ahead, holding control, select all of these, and use our offset tool on them. So I'll offset it by half a millimeter. And these two should match up perfectly because they're half a millimeter apart. So that works out perfectly. The only thing I need to do is use a line to close up this shape. And now you see that it fills in blue. That tells us this, this is a enclosed shape that's completely um, surrounded. If I delete the line, it's not an enclosed shape. I can't select it to turn into a 3D model because it doesn't. you can't use flat, infinitely thin lines for a model. You need it to have some thickness. So if we finish, close this off, it's now an enclosed shape. Perfect. And now we can combine that with our clasp and finish off our, our pen clip. So let me turn my bodies back on, hide the canvas for a second. Uh, and so in this case, ah, in this case, I fucked up. <laughs> um, in this case, I actually want to do this pen clasp from the side. Because if I try to, what I want to do is extrude this outwards, but because I'm on the corner of the um, the hexagon, obviously this clasp would have to like bend round at um, 30 degree angles to like meet up with the clasp. I want it to be one of the flat edges so I can actually like make this work. Uh, so I slightly fucked up. Um, but there is a relatively simple solution to this, which is I roll back my timeline and um, update this. Or uh, think you think you think. How do I actually want to update this just so it, it works out perfectly? Um, yeah, the easiest thing I could actually demonstrate this as just a separate model. Um, the easiest thing would have been if I was doing this from one of the flat faces and then it just, you know, combined into the flat faces. That would be the easiest thing. But I can use this as a slight, like, teaching moment. So let me extrude. Um, I'll extrude it out by, like, two millimeters. And then instead of doing in one direction, I'll tell it to be symmetrical. So it's actually two millimeters in both directions. So it's four wide. Or instead of half, I can do whole length and tell it to be four. I'll tell this to be a new body and hit OK. And so now this bit of the clasp is just sort of floating in space, which isn't perfect. But, and this is a messy, not like advisable if you're like engineering and making everything constrained, but I can use the move tool, rotate, and the rotate wants me to pick an axis. Because I know the center of the pen is based on like the perfect X, Y, Z axis, if I hide things, show my origin, if I, I tell the axis to be the z-axis, I can rotate this around our origin and be perfect. Um, and so we used a hexagon, so it should be 30 degrees. If I rotate it by 30 degrees, it should line up perfectly. Pretty much. Ah, but it's slightly off because the corner of a hexagon is obviously slightly further than the edge of a hexagon. Blah. But I can use the move tool again, and I could move this bit of the clasp in to then match up. So I could do, uh, let's see, how would I want to do? I could do point to point. I could select the middle of this face and move it, or let's see, I could do move point to point. I could start at the middle of this edge and move it, hmm, maybe the middle of this edge and move it to the middle of that edge, and tell it to use, tell it to move the body here. Hmm, how do I do this? All of this is a result of just me being dumb. This is completely my mistake right at this point.
Let's move these. There we go. And then these will snap together. And then these are still two separate bodies, but if I wanted to combine them into one body, I can select both of them, hit combine, and tell them to join. Um, and in this case, the clasp actually kind of goes through the top of the pen there, so I could actually take this and I could move it, M as in mountain, or move to move, and then just use the free move tool and just drag this down a little bit. And now the clasp isn't inter intersecting anything. Okay. So, hopefully it made sense what I was doing there. Literally the only reason I had to do that little bit of weird like rotating and moving is because I fucked up and started modeling something flat on a corner. Um, but it, it gave a chance to kind of demonstrate a few extra little tools, and like something I want to do here, just for the fun of it, is I'll fill it the corners here, just so, like, if I were a nice manufacturer and I didn't want the clip of my pen to, like, be really sharp and cut people's fingers, I might round it off a little bit. But there we go. We've kind of introduced the tools of Fusion 360 um, and made a pen which I slightly fucked up, but we made a pen.